Hello my friends, uh, in today's video we are going to discuss the Quasar F3 unit, its uh, main screen uh, and uh, settings menu. Okay, let's start. So let's start from the main menu menus. Uh, let's run from all we see on the screen. So this, this number is current ground balance. Uh, here we will see the A uh, the A letter in case the auto ground balance is switched on. Now it is switched off. Uh, right, uh, C. The C is our current coil uh, or the coil profile. We can have a different uh, amount of uh, the coils and uh, we can set all of them. And for example, we can have A, B, C, D and so on. Right. Uh, N uh, means the filter is normal. This is the search filter. We will talk about this uh, a little bit later in the main menus. Here we can see the uh, the backlight icon. Now backlight is on. Uh, here we can see the uh, current voltage of the battery. If the current voltage will fall below the special set value. In my case, I set it to six volts. We will see the warning sign here. Uh, over here, we can see the current uh, frequency of the coil. This is the uh, signal strength, or uh, for someone, it could be like a depth of the target. Strength of the signal, strength of the signal, signal, and uh, depth of the target, and here, uh, here is the signograph. So this is iron, this is iron zone, and these are uh, good metals signals. Okay, in the main, uh, in the main screen, what can we do? Uh, so first of all, the left button, uh, it is on-off button. So for switching unit off, we should, uh, we should hold it for a couple of seconds, like like that. Okay, we will not uh, switch it on, off. Okay, so the short click here, uh, we're getting to the ground balance menu. So current value of ground balance is seven degrees. You can, you can just uh, tune this by hand, but normally, normally we don't do it by hand. We use the auto ground balance, which is activated by the uh, up arrow. Okay, so we press the up arrow. In my case, nothing happens, but um, uh, but actually, with the with the coil, uh, the unit will wait for the signal from the coil, and uh, by by regular pumping up or down, you will you will. Turn, uh, you will tune the ground balance. It is a separate procedure, but it is fairly simple, very simple. Okay, so let's go out of this menace. Uh, then what can we do? These arrows uh, are up and down. Uh, this changes the barrier. The barrier is opposite volume, uh, value from the, uh, from the sensitivity. So the less barrier, the more sensitivity unit will have. Let's check this. So I'm, I'm getting down to the very top sensitivity. And we can see that uh, we have some noises. And this unit 025 is insane sensitivity. So it's only applicable on the, on the, in the good uh, places like woods and so on. Okay, let's go to the barrier three. Uh, then if we click to the left, um, it will be mask, so we can we can uh, hide all the iron mask, uh, all the iron signals, or show them. I like to go with this sector opened, but we will make some tuning for for the audio uh, to be comfortable with the with the iron here. Okay, then the next uh, the next button is. Uh, Pin pointer. So the short, the short click is pin pointer. Um, the long click activates switching between two frequencies in case you have a two two frequency coil. So long press. 
it will it will change its frequency to the to the to the other frequency. Right, so that's basically it about the main screen, and uh, let's see that just an example of this of the signals. I'm touching the the connector. We can see signal graph, and we can see the strengths of the signal. Okay, that's basically it about uh, the main screen. Let's go to the main menu. Okay, main menus. Let's just run from run through the through all of the items here. So we have coil profile. Uh, this is where we select which coil we have or save it in our memory. We can have different coils. Audio is audio is uh, audio settings, uh, all about sound. Uh, the filter. Let's stop a little bit more about this. Uh, the filter is basically the speed uh, unit reacts to the uh, to the differences in the ground and in the targets. So the the general rule is that we use uh, slow filters for bigger depths for bigger depths. Uh, but the speed of the unit will be less, so the like reactivity uh, of the unit will be less. So very slow or slow we can use in the fields or in the forests where not too much, uh, not too much uh, signals, not too much iron debris, and uh, also uh, normally we use these filters in the light soils like uh, sand, sand or light soils. So if you have a difficult soil, like a clay or black soil, uh, we can go to slow or to normal. Or if we are in the iron infested, iron garbage site, we should go to fast or very fast. The signal will be very detailed, will be very fast, but uh, the depths will sacrifice a little bit. So the depths will be smaller. If you want speed, go fast or very fast. If you want depths, deep, deep signals, uh, go to very slow or slow. My normal filter is slow or normal. Okay, mask. Mask is what we did with this button, so we can make it off or on, or we can edit it. If we if we need some special mask, we can go inside and edit. We will learn it in this separate. Uh, part of this video, right? The stone mask is um, is quite a simple feature, uh, which allows us to get rid of the annoying uh, hot rocks. This is hot rocks. So how does it work? Normally, hot rocks are uh, situated at the end of the VDI scale. So normally, you see hot rocks right here. So uh, copper and hot rocks are in the very last uh, sectors. If we have a lot of them and if uh, they really annoy us, then we can we can try to cut them off. This is working. Now I don't have any stone mask. If I go right, I add um, some degrees of stone mask. So what will happen? Uh, so what will happen? Now you see this triangle. That means that we, we have an active cutting of the of the stones right here. So what is happening? Uh, the device will cut out some uh, some last um, points of the VDI scale. This is a little bit dangerous because you probably can lose a big copper right there. So be careful. This is not this is not a toy. <laughs> Only use it when when you really have to. Okay. Uh, the next uh, the next point is backlight on or off. It works like if we go off, it will uh, it will stay. Uh, it will have a backlight on in the menus, and it will have a gradually off in the main screen. So now it is off. If we begin to do something, oh no, it's 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 not working like in ARM. So okay, it's it's just on or off. In the menus, it's always on. Right, uh, so let's get it back to the on. Uh, backlight level is is just backlight level. It's clear. Uh, just for you, normally you could 
make this off and you will be okay because normally we dig in the daytime and you will see the your device very good and you will save a little bit of the battery by having backlight uh, backlight off okay uh, this point this uh, this item says that our make uh, our main screen now is it is signograph so signograph is the like uh, stick diagram or linear diagram I think it's very good in Quasar. It's very fast and it's very detailed. It's very good. I, uh, this is my preference. But if we change it to Godograph, this is also very welcome options in the in the unit. So now we have Godograph, and uh, you, you know this, I think. Uh, Godograph is also quite good here because some of the devices uh, they they do not show the Godograph with weak signals. Quasar shows Godograph in every kind of the signal. This can also confuse person uh, at the very first time because if we have noises or if we have some phantoms or, or if we have a very small signals, uh, the Godograph will be still there. Look, check this. So even the very slow very small signal provokes uh, the the big godograph this is a little bit different how it made in the other devices but uh, i think this is better this can confuse uh, at the first time but uh, it's very sensitive to the signals to, to the very small sig uh, signals okay the uh, ground balance auto now is off we can make it on it is very good working feature in quasars so uh, you can rely on that in my experience you can fully rely on that and uh, don't care too much about uh, about manual uh, ground balance tuning so just leave it on just start to go start to go and you will see these values this angle of the ground balance will change accordingly to your uh, soil this works pretty good with quasars i think more better than in other detectors this is system uh, section settings we will get back to that okay let's run to through the detailed uh, settings so we just run from the basic settings let's go let's go let's deep into into the more system settings so this is a system is about system so now here you can make a complete reset of the unit so this the memory will be deleted uh, this is calibration of volt matter what you should do is when you when you receive a brand new unit or you did the factory reset you should set the volt matter here so there are two ways how to do this first of all you can just measure the volume or the volt the voltage uh, of your batteries by by using your multimeter or voltmeter uh, measure them measure the batteries and just set uh, the voltage here this is just a very accurate calibration of your voltage so from this moment when you calibrated your voltage you will always know that your voltage is accurate and you will know how much of the juice how much of the power is is now in your batteries this is uh, the option which sets a warning for the low voltage so everything below this value uh, you will hear you will see the warning in the quasar arm you will hear you'll hear audio warning in quasar f3 you will hear, you will see a visual warning this is contrast of the display uh, normally this is set uh, on the factory but you can change it uh, the rule normally is that you should see a little bit of the black like shadow around this is normal settings so uh, this is too small this is too small this is too much you should you should see a little bit of the shadow this is the proper way to set the contrast uh, okay so we run through this menu let's go to the uh, to the well, let's have a quick look into the coil because we will have another video about setting of the coil let's just have a, a short view in this menu so if we go to the current coil or if we change this 
So now we are in the coil A. Now we are in the coil B. So let's go into the coil B. Okay, um, so that is the current which is currently pushed by unit to the uh, transmitter transmitting coil. Now it is zero because I don't have any coil. Uh, it's close to zero. I don't have any coil connected. Uh, this is switch, which is a multi frequency coils switch. It will be zero or f or first. So you can set one of the coils as uh, first position of the coil, first frequency of the coil, or zero uh, frequency of the coil. Now this is. Uh, the frequency of our coil. You can tune it by hand, just by move left to right, or you can enter the settings of the... it will go into automatic uh, search for the coil. This is currently the balance of the coil, the nulling of the coil. Now it is quite big, I don't have any coils, it is quite big because I have a automatic compensation system on. Uh, we will definitely speak about this later, but if I go off, the balance becomes almost zero. It's, ne it's never zero because the, the, ca the cables, cabling, uh, but it's around zero. This is our regular balance of the coil. Now, okay, if I go Okay, I will save this value. Now balance is 16. Right, the ferrite zero is the very important setting. One of the very important settings and quite simple to set with uh, with these units. Uh, we will go to this point later. Okay, let's go out of this menus. Let's go into audio. Right, so this is the main volume. This is the main volume. Uh, this settings says the volume attenuation for ferrum. So how does it work? As I said, I like to use the unit uh, with all of the sectors open. I like to listen, I like to hear ferrum also, yes? And uh, because I don't want my ears to, to become fatigue, uh, I can make the attenuation of the signal for ferrum. So I will hear ferrum, but it will be not as loud as other signals. So the more settings is here, the more attenuated is signal for ferrum. This is quite useful. I would say that I'm using something in the middle, like five. So I hear ferrum, but it is not so loud. Right, the next settings is volume variation. Uh, this is the amount of the levels of the variation of the sound depending from the depth of the target or depending from the strength of the, th of the signal. So let's imagine that we set volume variation to one. We have only one volume uh, variation. So that means that signal will be always very loud depending, not depending on the strength of the signal. So it is good when you don't have uh, a, uh, headphones, any headphones, or it is also good when you're novice, or when you came from the very simple devices, like uh, like uh, initial models of the Garrett, uh, for example. So these devices also also have the similar signal for every kind of the, of the target. Uh, but it is very good because you cannot set a unit for the maximum sensitivity because you will you will hear phantoms you will hear phantoms and you will have uh, you will hear them very loud so what normally we do if i don't use headphones i put volume variations 3 if i use uh, headphones i use it 6 or 7 so that means that I can set the sensitivity of the unit to the maximum. I can hear uh, phantoms, but phantoms are not very loud. I can easily distinguish them from the good signal. Right. Okay, so the professional settings would be 5 to 7. I really recommend it. All right. This, the threshold uh, is... Uh, is a threshold actually. This is well-known feature which will activate the sound with the frequency of 100 kilohertz. In our case, we can change it. We can change the frequency. 
So what we'll do uh, if we if we switch uh, positive threshold, um, it so the normal settings. <laughs> if comparing to the other units, the normal settings for threshold is minus. So we have minus one threshold. So what what will happen? Let's go to the main uh, screen. So what is basically a threshold? Uh, it is a sound, so we, we can hear the sound now, the continuous tone. And what will happen if uh, unit sees the target? Uh, if unit sees a very weak target, the threshold sound will be broken, so it will disappear. So the user, without hearing a signal from the, from the target, it will, uh, he will hear here the disappearance of the threshold sound. We can emulate this by lowering the barrier. You can see, you can hear that. Okay, let's try barrier two. You can hear that um, threshold is getting cut. So that's that's the very small signals, very weak signals happening. Okay, so we can have, as I said, that we can have a threshold of minus. So this is just a volume uh, threshold of minus. And also in Quasar F3, you can have a threshold of plus. So let's view how it works. So actually the opposite way um, the weak target will provoke the sound of the threshold not standard probably not very useful option okay so let's let's go to well, we will switch threshold off this is the frequency of the sound of this tone uh, sound schemes um, they, it, it should it it can take another some another time for, to, to explain all the scams. Let's just uh, let's just stop on most uh, most interesting schemes. So one of the standard sound schemes is one. This is a polyphony, the regular polyphony. Uh, the second scheme is uh, monotone. So uh, sorry, two tones. One tone is for iron, and another tone will be for every other good targets okay I don't remember currently I don't remember the scam tree what is what is it uh, as I remember it is a mixture between uh, between two tones and polyphony so majority of the good tar good targets will be polyphony and the copper will be uh, other sound okay the sound scheme number four is quite interesting scheme which makes uh, which makes possible to find targets with low conductivity. So what will happen if we switch sound scan four and let's go to the signal graph. Okay. So uh, normally this sector, this first sector is iron and this all, uh, all are uh, color uh, metals. Uh, so in the first scheme, this is like I said, so first is iron, next is colors. Uh, the gold, which uh, can, can be somewhere like, like here, let me take, so the gold will probably be somewhere right here. Also the foil, the foil uh, will be some, somewhere like, like in these places. But very low conductivity metals can go even below so they can be right here in the metal in the in the iron sector so if you are using the sound scheme one you will see you will hear all of them as iron if we go to the sound scheme number four what it does it is the same as scheme number one it is polyphony but what it does it colors this area, the end of the end of the iron area, as color signals. So if you believe that will be uh, deep, low conductivity targets, it is probably good to open these sectors by using the scheme number four. So here will be iron, 
and here starts good signals right okay let's go to audio again and the last scheme the last sound scheme is sound scheme number five which is just five tones sound scheme so all of the scale will be divided to five to five even uh, play uh, even parts basically like these ones right and every big sector will have its own sound i will recommend for profession prof for professional use of the device i will recommend polyphony first or fourth uh, uh, schemes but you can use five scheme at the beginning it's very understandable right okay uh, another option in audio is FM transmitter so uh, all of the quasars including F3 and ARM include FM transmitter so once we just click it to the right it begins on we don't hear hear any uh, sound because it goes now onto FM transmitter if we want to turn to, to tune it so we go inside this is the frequency we just simply tune all the uh, the frequency we want normally we just take a frequency which is far away from the existing frequencies of the existing radio uh, these are amplification settings um, normally the amp uh, empiric values will be a little bit to decrease this value to minus four leave volume eight and we're good so how to tune this um, if the FM transmitter has a good ha has a too much amplification uh, like like for example one or zero or something like this and you will hear that the sound from FM is not really good it's like squeaky or uh, it's bad yeah so the way to pr uh, to improve this is to lower the amp power gain amplification like minus four and you're good just remember these settings and you're good okay so we are good with FM transmitter uh, by the way I forgot to tell one thing remember to press OK in the menus so if you exit from the menus with just escape or menu you will lose the settings you do you done uh, here if you exit with OK you save the settings this is quite important don't don't forget to to save the settings okay so we're basically at the very end of current video so we actually run through all of the settings menu and through the main menu of the quasar f3 unit okay if you have any questions or comments please feel free to comment below under the video thank you for attention bye bye